I have to start by acknowledging, as I did at the very beginning last year in December, my colleagues. My colleagues who had the faith in me uh, to elect me uh, as their council president. I truly am humbled by the confidence that each of you had in me last December, and I thank you. As many of you who have served as council president know, it has been a distinct honor and privilege, and there is certainly nothing like representing this council. I want to thank my vice president, council member uh, George Leventhal, uh, for his leadership and support. He and I worked well over this past year, and I applaud and appreciate him stepping up whenever I needed him to. I really appreciate everything that you've done this year, George, so thank you. Of course, everyone who knows me personally knows that uh, family matters so much, and of course, I want to uh, acknowledge my mother and father, who I know are watching at home, and of course, thank my kids. Uh, being council president, as many of you know, has many more nights and weekends away from home than usual, and it takes its toll on family life, and that's something I value and cherish. So I want to, of course, thank my wife, Tia, who has stepped up, uh, allowing me to handle the county's business as the council president. Uh, I want to thank her and uh, acknowledge her as being my rock. Uh, I want to say thank you to the entire legislative staff. Uh, Steve Farber, who heads up our tremendous team of uh, folks who do a tremendous job of not only making sure that the council has all the information that it needs, um, but also making sure that we're supported, making sure that uh, this council continues to innovate and be creative in its thinking of how we can best address and tackle the challenges that face Montgomery County. I want to thank each and every one of our staff members for the great relationships that we've been able to forge uh, between my staff and your departments. Uh, it's created tremendous work products over this year that uh, are truly uh, instrumental when it comes to moving Montgomery County forward, so I thank you for that. And of course, to my amazing team, headed up by my chief of staff, Steve Goldstein, uh, Steve, you've been there from the beginning. Thank you so much. Uh, to my Deputy Chief of Staff, Sharon St. Pierre, who continues to uh, rise uh, above and beyond all that's asked, as well as, of course, my stalwarts in my office, Rose Taylor and Danielle Amoya, my senior legislative aides, who are always there to make sure that folks that have questions, that need things, uh, are provided the information, uh, serve as the real uh, wheels of the operation that continue us going each and every day. And I hear such tremendous compliments about my office, about the interaction that you have. So I just wanted to say thank you to you guys as well. So many of you heard throughout this year that I talked about how important it was for us to continue to function as one Montgomery. It's a theme espoused during the council presidency of Councilmember Navarro. And this year, I made sure that I worked hand in hand with our county executive legate and his staff, uh, Superintendent Starr and our school board, Dr. Pollard and Montgomery College, Stu Edelstein and the universities at Shady Grove, to make sure that Montgomery County stayed on track as the economic and education leader of the state. You know, in 2012, I had the privilege to visit the White House and President Obama had talked specifically about the fact that you don't get elected to be somebody, you get elected to do something. And I feel confident that this year, as we have in the many years past, we've certainly answered the president's call and we've certainly done a lot this year. You know, in December, I set out a very ambitious goal, uh, one that maybe sometimes I regret, uh, that there are a whole bunch of things that I wanted to accomplish but I am proud to say that we have accomplished so many of them. And I want to talk about and highlight a few. You know, I wanted us to make sure that we continue to maintain fiscal responsibility. And as the economy continued to recover from the Great Recession, the council made responsible fiscal decisions that kept the county moving forward. In May, we approved a $4.99 billion budget 
And that fully funded the county's world-class school system, as well as provided major new support for Montgomery College. It added new resources to our great park system and boosted critical areas that had suffered for a very long time during the recession, including our libraries, public safety, and transportation. And so this budget included reserves at historic highs. And in October, the three major credit rating agencies came back with our county's reaffirmed AAA bond rating. This is not a task that's easy to do and accomplish. And in addition to that, this council also uh, lowered the increase of the county's fuel energy tax by an additional 7%, bringing the three-year total reduction to 27%. These choices aren't easy. Uh, just read in this morning's paper, Fairfax continues to struggle with their budget. We're seeing around us that the sound decisions that we're making here are ones that will continue to solidify Montgomery County's future. And to that end, it was important that we continued investing in our future. We approved a $2.28 billion Montgomery County public schools budget, and that provided new resources to make sure that we tried to close the achievement gap while adhering to the state's maintenance of effort requirement. We also added 10 school resource officers, which provided one officer at every single high school in Montgomery County. Uh, the council approved a total budget of $297 million for Montgomery College, which was basically the entire uh, college's tax-supported request, and provided an additional $3.5 million for the Germantown Bioscience Education Center. And understanding our commitment and responsibility to doing our part to help fight the achievement gap, we also added $2 million for the ACEs, or Achieving Coll Collegiate Ed Excellence and Success, uh, the program that's aimed at making sure that those that are underrepresented in higher education have their opportunity at a college education. You know, some of the core that's at Montgomery County's uh, uh, it, it is about making sure that we protect those that need more. And um, we had to protect our most vulnerable by strengthening the social safety net. This was a key priority as the fiscal year 15 budget protected core services and our safety net programs at unprecedented levels. The council continued its strong support of the Montgomery CARES program by adding $960,000 to increase the Montgomery CARES community pharmacy, specialty care, and behavioral health services. We also added $225,000 for adult outpatient mental health services and $250,000 to establish a mobile crisis response team for children and adolescents suffering from mental health crisis. Again, I know that our chair of our Health and Human Services Committee, along with Councilmember Navarro, who served on the Health and Human Services Committee, made a commitment to mental health. And I know that will continue uh, in the coming years. And of course, I can't forget about uh, my great experience uh, being out with our homeless uh, for three days, understanding the needs of that community and I'm very happy to see that you know, we continue to provide subsidies for our medically vulnerable homeless adults and 20 rapid rehousing subsidies for some of those families. You know, the efforts of county government and our nonprofit uh, partners resulted in an 11% decrease in the number of homeless counted in this most recent post point in time survey and a 33% decrease in the number of unsheltered single adults we certainly have accomplished so much. And we also knew that we needed to do more for some of our lower wage earners. And it was Councilmember Elrich and uh, Councilmember Branson, Councilmember Navarro and others who came together and pushed so that a new county minimum wage could be approved. Montgomery County, which previously followed the state minimum wage, now has a new county minimum wage law that takes a graduated approach. We, starting on October 1st, in its first phase, the county minimum wage was increased uh, from the state minimum of $7.25 to the new county minimum wage of $8.40 an hour. And that wage, based on the great work that was done here on this council, will reach $11.50 per hour on October 1st, 2017. 
We also took on a great task of making sure that people could understand our zoning code better. And so the first major zoning code ordinance revision since 1978 was actually completed this year. And the first major changes to this county ordinance uh, also included a new digital zoning map. You know, we wanted to make sure that our community could better understand whether it was people who were looking to develop their own homes uh, or our commercial real estate, that we wanted to make it easier for them to just understand the rules. That's all that people have asked for for a very long time. Help us to make sure that we can have a clear expectation and understanding of what it is we need to do. And we delivered on that. And of course, last but not least, we tackled the most master plans ever taken on by uh, the county council. This was important because our master plans serve as a blueprint of what we foresee to come for that particular area. And so just to name a few, our White Oak Science Gateway Plan that we just recently approved will transform that area on the east side of the county, an area that's been in such need of revitalization. And around that Route 29 corridor and the Food and Drug Administration, we're going to transform that community into a vibrant mixed use area to continue to provide jobs and transportation access for all of those residents that have been sorely asking uh, for those kinds of changes for a very long time. And of course, in my district, our Clarksburg 10 Mile Creek uh, plan was approved and that limited master plan amendment was unanimously approved by this council and stays close to the original density projected in the 1994 master plan for the emerging community. But what it also does, and it's important, is take significant steps to protect the long-term health of a watershed area that feeds our little Seneca Reservoir. You know, as we continue to talk about a lot of the things that are so important to us, whether it's making sure that we get people back to work with our ban the box bill legislation that was approved, or also improving our procurement process. You know, the great thing is, is that this council authorized the creation of two task forces to recommend improvements to the county procurement process. And we also have two bills that are going to radically change the procurement process for our minority, female, and disabled owned businesses that need help to grow from the companies they currently are into the Metamunes or Hughes network systems of tomorrow. All these things can continue to be accomplished with the great work of this council. We conserved energy and protected our environment under the leadership of Council Member Berliner and his Transportation, Infrastructure, Energy and Environment Committee. We moved the needle forward in making sure that we were more energy efficient as well as protecting uh, our great environment, something that we need to secure for future generations. And in keeping with our senior agenda, we also continue to help our seniors, lowering the minimum age eligible for property tax credits for seniors of lim limited income and doubling the amount of some of the credits from 25 to 50 percent of the state and county homeowners property tax credits. As you can see, we've tackled some of the most serious challenges facing us and been successful delivering to our residents. We utilize planning, preparation, investment, and most of all, leadership. I look forward to working with this 18th Council through another four years marked with success and milestones like the ones that we've achieved this year. This has been an incredibly, incredibly uh, just fulfilling uh, and surreal moment for me to lead uh, this council. As a person who was born and raised here in Montgomery County, it means so much to deliver to my residents, to the place that I love, that I've always called home. I want to thank each and every one of my colleagues for all the great work that they've done and the support that they've given me over this year. It has been a wild ride, and I thank you very much and congratulate each of you on your success. Thank you.